So welcome back to video number two. Now, in the first video, we looked at some of the history of evolutionary thought. And since that time, um, these ideas have developed a long way. So for example, we can talk about the modern synthesis. This reflects the early to mid 20th century developments in evolutionary theory that combined the idea of Darwinian selection with a population oriented view of genetics. That's something that if you're reading about the history of evolution, you will almost certainly come across. And we've built on that um, ever since. So today we can explore evolution in many ways. So we're just going to have a quick look at one of those first in this video. And then we're going to look at some of the philosophical framework for understanding evolution. So the example that I wanted to show you is this simulation that you can see here. Essentially, all it does is it takes the most basic rules of evolution and uses them to explore evolutionary topics. So on this video, you can see an environment shown on the left here. Color representations of two types of genome. Um, so this is a simulation that has individuals which have genomes. And on the right hand side, you can see uh, this um, colored on the basis of different species. So this software has a, um, a species identification algorithm. If I set the simulation running, which I'll do in a second, you'll see these organisms going to fill this red circle and fill this gray square outside it. And all of these species are, are shown and their relationships are conveyed in this diagram on the bottom here. So as this simulation kicks off, what you see is that we've got a population that fills this circle at first, nothing can survive, however, in this gray environment. So there's, a, there's an algorithm here that links the color of the environment to fitness. But then something uh, is able to live outside. And suddenly we see uh, uh, the organisms filling this region outside. You can see also speciations occurring in the software. And then I hope, as you saw, um, when I added this gray stripe through the center, these species went in to fill the middle space, and then there was a speciation in the middle here, um, which occurred as a result of this foray into these new ecological niches. The exact details of this don't really matter for our purposes, so I don't, I don't want you to lose sleep about how this works, but if you're interested, you can look at this paper that I've put on the slide here. That explains everything that you just saw in a lot more detail. But the important point you can take away from this is that today, for example, we can use computers to study evolution. We can look at processes like speciation or the interplay of ecology and evolution and the impact that the rate of environmental change has on the evolutionary processes and much, much more. And this is just one very lazy example of modern evolutionary relationship of modern evolutionary research. I say lazy because I wrote this software, so you know I'm just using stuff that I have lying around. I think it's also worth noting though that if you put in place the basic principles of evolution in a piece of software, many of the things we associate with the evolution of life in the real world automatically follow. So that is a recap of evolution and then an introduction to the history of the theory of, of evolution. But let's finish by quickly talking about what a theory actually is. We often hear in this kind of dismissive way that evolution is just a theory. Sometimes, for example, um, that's used by creationists as an insult under the misapprehension that this means that it is not strongly supported by evidence. That's, I guess, in part because of the, the use of the word theory in everyday um, discourse. So let's look at what a theory is in a scientific context. In order to define a theory, we need to define a few other things first. So in science, we can say that a fact is an observation that has been repeatedly confirmed for, and for all practical purposes is accepted in true. Okay, so that's what a fact is within science. Within science, we have also hypotheses. These are tentative statements about how the natural world um, works, which then lead to deductions that can be te tested. If the deductions are verified, the hypothesis is provisionally corroborated. However, if those deductions are incorrect, the original hypothesis is proved false and must be abandoned or modified. 
And then we have laws. So laws are a descriptive generalization about how some aspect of the natural world behaves under stated circumstances. So that's facts, hypotheses, and laws. And if we want to define a theory within a scientific context, we need all three of those definitions. So thinking back to those, we can say that in science, a theory is a well-substantiated explanation of some aspect of the natural world that can incorporate facts, laws, inference, and tested hypotheses. So all of those things feed in to this idea of a theory or this definition of a theory. So there's nothing just about a theory. When we're talking about science, which in terms of evolution, we always are, um, theories um, do not turn into facts through the accumulation of evidence as the everyday use of the word might imply. Rather, theories are the ultimate end point of the scientific endeavour. They're a way of looking at the world that has explanatory and predictive implications. Thus, comments that evolution is just a theory are either dishonest or they lack a fundamental misunderstanding oh, sorry they, they lack fundamental understanding of the meaning of this word in the scientific context so famous theories include general relativity plate tectonics big bang atoms cells and gravitation so if you're ever talking to someone who says something is just a theory you may want to point out that for example gravity is just a theory and if one is confident that theories um, are you know not really to be believed they can prove um, their, their adherence to this point by jumping out of a second floor window that's the kind of um, level of evidence we have that underlies a theory now obviously the scientific process and scientists recognize that sometimes ideas are wrong the entire point of science is that this is a self-correcting process and as such, a core idea of modern research is the idea of falsifiability. I've put a, a definition of this, of a falsification on the slide for you. And the key part of this is um, the, the idea that hypotheses are confirmed by evidence to, hide, hide to a high degree, but they are capable of being refuted by evidence. So this refutation is falsification. So can we do this? with evolution? Well, of course we can. Evolution is a scientific theory, and there are a whole world, there are almost infinite numbers of discoveries that would overturn the predictions that are made by the theory of evolution. A really famous example comes from the biologist J.B.S. Haldane, who famously growled in response to the question of what would falsify evolution, fossil rabbits in the Precambrian. If we were to find rabbits, mammals, any form of more complex life that we recognize around today in Precambrian rocks, all of the theory of evolution, most of geology would be incorrect. But despite looking for over 100 years, we never have. Now, I admit, I largely chose that example so I could um, put on this slide these fantastic 14th century illustrations of rabbits from France because they're just really, really awesome. <laughs> 